just reverence him this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Father, you are awesome this morning. There is none like unto you. Lord, as we come with our hearts, bow before you, God. Oh, we cry unto you this morning that you will just visit us by your Holy Spirit, God. Come, God, and tabernacle with us this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Creating us this morning, oh God, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence this morning, oh God. We have come this morning, God, empty. Oh God, we come to seek you. We come to find your God. We come, God, with our hearts empty for you to fill us this morning. Oh God, wherever we are lacking this morning, you will just fill us up this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord God, we come boldly before your throne this morning. Morning. Oh God, we ask you for grace and mercy, God. Purify us this morning, God. Make haste to help us this morning, God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, arise, shine, for your light has come this morning. Let the glory of the Lord this morning come and dwell within our hearts this morning. Break every strong heart. Break every hard heart. Break every strong thing this morning. Morning. Oh God, that come to hinder. Oh God, we your people from entering to your rest, from entering to your peace. Oh God, we ask of you this morning. Oh God, to come and tabernacle with us, God. Take away the flaws, take away the unrighteousness, the unholiness, God, from before you. Teach us how to walk holy before you. Teach us how to walk in your ordinance, in your precepts this morning, God. Teach us how to walk. Oh God, a narrow path this morning. Oh God, we call upon you. We are living in evil days. So God, we are calling upon you, our righteous and holy God, this morning. We are calling upon you, our Haitian God, this morning. Oh God, to subdue the things that is not of you this morning. Oh God, break our coat of satire. Oh God, every high thing this morning that I want to exalt itself above your knowledge this morning. We put them into subjection in the name of Jesus. Let hearts, oh God, come clean before you. Let our hearts be pure before you, God. Oh, make haste to help us, God. Make haste to help us. Oh God, wash us. Purify our hearts this morning. Oh God, with his up this morning. Be our finest fire this morning, oh God. Oh God, pour out your hearts before him. He's holy this morning. He's our God this morning. Morning. He's our manifested one this morning. Let the glory of the Lord be revealed in the hearts of your people in the name of Jesus. Oh, let your fear return to the hearts of us this morning. Oh, God, let your fear return to our hearts this morning. Oh, God, where we honor you. Oh, God, where we have gratitude. Oh, Kondoro Bosatai. Faithful God, we worship you. Holy God, we honor you this morning. Oh God, break. Oh God, our hearts this morning. Take away the stony heart. Let, oh God, let us have a heart of flesh before you this morning. Oh God, prepare us this morning to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, we will be a living this morning. Oh God, help us to enter into your gate with thanksgiving and into your courts with Players, we be thankful unto you and bless your name for you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you for consecrating us afresh this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, we come boldly before you. Oh God, we lay our heart as a sacrifice upon the altar this morning. The altars of sacrifice. Oh God, lay it all this morning. We lay our hearts before you this morning. Oh, we lay our hearts before you. God, strip us of the things that is not of God this morning. Strip us of the things that is not of God this morning. The things that we possess that is not of you, God. Oh, God, we, pro we prostrate before you this morning. Cause our heart to prostrate before you this morning. Father, we thank you for the rest of this service. We thank you for the worship. We thank you, God, for every proceeding forward this morning. Oh, God, we exalt you and we honor you and we give you glory. 
glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. And oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Yeah. Oh, the mighty of that God did spend at Say, pardon, there was multiply to me. Say, it was there, my burden so foully liberty at Calvary. Can we sing it one more time? Anybody brought their holy hands with them this morning? Come on, lift them and give God a praise in the house. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that we brought our hands with us so we can clap. Come on, somebody. And I'm happy that we brought our feet with us so we can dance and jump and skip all over the place. Yeah. We didn't leave them at home. We brought them. And I'm happy that we brought our mouths. Come on, somebody. I'm happy that we brought our mouth so we can praise God like he deserves to be praised. We can bless God the way he deserves to be blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We come here to praise him. We come here to praise him. We come here to praise the Lord. We come here to sing and shout and clap our oh, hands. Alright, 
come here to praise him. Yeah, we come here to praise him. generation this morning call for to show his excellence and all that we require for life uh, God has given us come on uh, and we know who we are I know who I am come on uh, somebody declare that thing say I know who I am yeah it's a good thing to know who you are and whose you are you walk with the assurance and you walk in confidence hallelujah hallelujah Come on, can we just put our hands together like this? Come on. We are a chosen generation. Call for it to show His excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. Can we sing this again? Say a chosen Jenner. Hey, oh, let me quit you for life. Say, I know, come with the treasure. I know who got treasure. Say, where is this a man? I know who, I, say, I know who got treasure. Say, say, where is this a man? Chosen Jenna. Come on, say, call for to show all I require for life. Say, I know. Can we try one more time? We are a chosen. Call for all I require for life. God has given me. I know who God says I am. Say, where is it I'm at? I know who, I know who God says. Hey, what is it I am? I know I'm working. I'm working very good. I, I know who I am. I'm working in power. 
a wonder. It doesn't matter when you see now. Can I see his glory? Hey, I know who I am. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter when you see now. Can I see his glory?
Say I'm no longer, I'm no longer to be. Can we declare it in a place for I am? I know who I am. One more time, I'm no longer. Yeah. 
salvation, God, I will. I will exalt you. It's all about you. It's all about you. You are my God. Yeah. I will exalt you. Come on, somebody, declare that. I will exalt. I will. I command my soul to bless him. I Rejoice, rejoice 
service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look out in a steadfast hope. Hallelujah. And my will oh, belongs to oh, God in thine heart. Draw me near. Near. Woo. Near, blessed Lord. To the cross where I died. Draw me near, oh, never, never blessed. But let's say the last one in a second. And I long to die and be close to John. We've got just 60 more seconds. Let's make it worth it. Say, draw me. Hallelujah. 
As we come, I don't know who else has realized that intercession has already begun. Because it's the Holy Spirit that makes intercession for us. With groanings that cannot be uttered. Hallelujah. Daughter, let's pray. Let's have the intercession. Jesus. Pray, pray, let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Father, we come before you this morning, Jesus. Father, we exalt your name, Lord. Father, we come before you this morning and we ask, mighty God, that Jesus, you will have mercy this morning, Jesus. Father, our soul cries out for mercy this morning, Jesus. Father God, as we come, mighty God, we recognize that you are God. We recognize that it is all in you, Lord Jesus. We recognize, mighty God, that we can do nothing without you, mighty God. That it is in you that we live and move and have our being. Father God, that all is in your hands, mighty God. That you sit high, you look low and you rule in the affairs of men. So Father God this morning, Father the blood mighty God is crying out this morning. Father God we come mighty God this morning and we pray for mercy mighty God. Oh God we're interceding this morning for our children Lord. Father God that eight year old mighty God might be the newest thing in the news this morning Lord. But we recognize mighty God that she's not the only one. Oh God, and that the innocent blood is crying out this morning. Oh God, we pray mighty God that you will interfere this morning. We pray for mercy this morning, Jesus. For mercy this morning, Jesus. Have mercy mighty God on our sinful condition, Lord. Have mercy mighty God. Oh God, let your hands of mercy, Jesus. Oh God, stretch over Jamaica this morning, Jesus. Oh God, we pray for mercy, God. Oh God, have mercy upon us this morning, Jesus. For it is your mercies where we are not consumed, mighty God. It is only because of your mercy where we stand here today, God. Oh Father, God, it's not any righteousness that we have. It's not any goodness that we have, but it's your mercy, God. So extend your mercy this morning, Jesus. Mighty God, for those that are shut in, mighty God. For those that are in the prisons, mighty God. For those that are in the gambling houses, mighty God. For those that are being trafficked, mighty God. For those, mighty God, that have lost their minds, mighty God. For those that are sick in their bodies, mighty God. Oh, we pray for mercy this morning. We pray for mercy this morning, Jesus. Your mercy makes the difference, Lord. Your mercy makes the difference, Jesus. Oh, Father God, the 
this morning, Jesus, we pray, mighty God, that you will not give us what we deserve, mighty God, but you will show us mercy, mighty God. Father God, when our sinful deeds come up to you, Lord, we pray, mighty God, oh, Father, that your mercy, mighty God, and your grace will be extended this morning, Jesus. Oh, God, oh, Jesus, this morning, Mercy, 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 Lord. Extend your hand of mercy over Jamaica. Oh, God, mercy, Lord. Oh, God, there have been murders. Oh, scamming. Oh, God, deception. Lying, mighty God. Oh, we have all become sinful, mighty God. We have turned away from your ways. We have turned from your covenants, Lord. But this morning, Jesus, you said if your people who are called by your name, if we would just humble ourselves and pray, if we would turn from our evil ways, you will hear, mighty God, and you will heal. Heal this morning, Jesus. Heal to the utmost this morning, Jesus. Our sin, sick condition, mighty God. Heal us, mighty God, from sin. Heal us this morning, Jesus. Father God, this morning we come, mighty God. Oh, Father, we need your deliverance, mighty God. Oh, we need the power from heaven this morning, Jesus. We cannot do it in our own strength today, God. God. We cannot do it with our own thoughts, mighty God. We cannot do it with our own imaginations, God. We need you, Lord God. So we pray, mighty God, that even now, Lord, let your supernatural power, mighty God, come down in Jamaica, mighty God. Oh, God, and by extension, this world, mighty God. Oh, Father God, and we pray, mighty God, that you will heal and deliver this morning, Jesus. Father God, we come against every plan of the enemy. Mighty God, we are not afraid, mighty God, to come against the plans of the enemy because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds. So this morning we pull down strongholds in the name of Jesus. Father God, we cancel every curse in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, we come against every diabolical plot in the name of Jesus. For you have given us the power, mighty God, to tread upon serpents, mighty God, and upon scorpions, mighty God. They shall not harm us, mighty God. Father God, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us is already condemned. Mighty God, we are the head and not the tail. We are your called out one. Mighty God, we are sitting in heavenly places this morning. Far above every principalities and powers. Mighty God, and we know, mighty God, that as we covenant with you, mighty God, we will be strong. We will do exploits. We speak growth. We speak healing. We speak life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we declare, mighty God, that even now, mighty God, every thought that will try to exalt itself against the knowledge of God is now being brought, mighty God, into subjection to the Lord God Almighty. It shall not stand. Every evil altar is torn down in the name of Jesus. We bind every witch and every warlock in the name of Jesus. Right now, we declare and we decree that we shall grow. We will do exercise. We will take territories. Persons are coming to kingdom grace. Our souls are saved through this ministry. In the name of Jesus. Father, we lift you up. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we magnify you this morning. Father God, we thank you, mighty God, for what you've already done. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this minute. And we thank you, mighty God, for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Jesus, have your way, God. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, Lord. We worship you. We lift you up. 
We worship the kings of kings this morning. We worship the Lord of Lords this morning. We worship the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. In this atmosphere, we give God the glory. We give him the honor because he's high and lifted up. He's exalted and there's no God like our God this morning. Hallelujah. And so in this atmosphere, we welcome the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let the blood wash away. Hallelujah. Oh, let the blood wash. Ah, say hallelujah this morning. Register your praise this morning. Ah, register your praise this morning in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. We praise God this morning. Welcome Holy Spirit. And in the same breath, I'd want everybody to stand right now. Hallelujah. In the sanctuary. Hallelujah. And we just want to acknowledge the shepherd of this house, the set man. Hallelujah. Reverend David Lewis, we honor you, sir. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. And so we want to welcome Minister Malachi Taylor from Wafif. Give him a round of applause for me. Hallelujah. It's in our midst this morning. We acknowledge the man of God and his son. Hallelujah. And so, hallelujah, we acknowledge Minister Christopher Williams too also. Hallelujah. Give him a warm round of applause. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so even now, we want to acknowledge our workers, our leaders, our workers. Hallelujah. In the same breath, give them a round of applause. Hallelujah. And I want to acknowledge our first, second, and third time visitors. Is there anybody in our midst for the second time? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just give him a round of applause. Make him welcome. Hallelujah. And the Kajimites, you are looking so beautiful this morning. We thank God for you in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. And our online visitors, we thank you for coming on to our platform this morning. And if it is that you are in this area, Twickenham Park, we welcome you to come to Shop 7, Phil's Hardware Plaza. Amen. Hallelujah. And for our announcements this morning, I want you to know that the One Soul More campaign is still on. Amen. And what it means is that you bring one soul more with you to the house each Sunday or even on a Tuesday. And so we have fasting service every Tuesday here in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Let me hear those persons who come to fasting service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't it a blessing? Hallelujah. That's right. And so we have Bible studies on Wednesday evening. That is 7.45 p.m. to 9 p.m. If you don't have the link, please ask for the link. Bible study is important. Amen? Amen. And so I want to say with, share with you that we are still on the series Operation Growth. Let me hear you shout Operation Growth. That's right. And so, Pastor is doing the five P's. We have already did possession and practices. So, we're going to move on to the other two P's. Pastor will come and share with you on that. And so, in this segment, I want to ask if anybody celebrated their birthday last week or any anniversaries or this week. Do we have anybody that celebrated last week? No? All right. Amen. But I want you to note that June 8th, is Father's Day. Hallelujah. And so we want to celebrate the men who are fathers and the men in Jamaica who are fathers too as well. It is important. Men are leaders. Amen. Let me hear you say amen to that. Men are leaders. That's right. And so I want to leave with you before I go the five-star general pointer that I want to share with you. And it says, the first star says, read the word of God and pray. Read additional spiritual material. And while I'm on that, we are now doing Grow Up in God. We have these books available. We have Honoring God, the Gateway of Success. And we have The Worshipper's Posture. Now, I want you to invest in that. Amen. There's a little phrase that says, reading maketh a man. All right? So you need to start reading so the second point is come to fast in service. If you can't come, watch the videos online. Amen? It is important. And while you watch, share with other persons. Don't be selfish. Share the word of God. It is important to share. 
And the third point is to come to Bible study. Always come to Bible study. If you can't come on, watch it after. Amen, people of God? And the fourth star is evangelize. It doesn't matter where you are, share the word of God. Don't be selfish. Jesus loves you. Share that with somebody. It will make a difference. And the fifth one is stay committed to the house and stay connected to the house. Whatever KG is doing, go on the platform. Go there and share. Amen. Go there and read what is happening. And remember that our care program is in process right now. What we want you to do is to contribute to the KG care program. So if you have a tin of mackerel, a tin of milk, whatever it is, non-perishable items, bring it. Every mickle makes a muckle. Amen. And there are those who are less fortunate than we are. And we want to make everybody happy. Amen. You can't tell somebody Jesus loves you and they're hungry. Amen. Care is what? An action word. When you love, you have to do something to show that. Amen. And so I want to wish you a productive week. And I will end by singing, I will testify. How many of you want to testify for this week? No man in a show like who want to testify at all. Hallelujah. I want to testify of God's goodness. I want to testify of his mercy. If there's nothing else, I want to testify that I am alive and well this morning. Hallelujah. So, look at your neighbor and say you need to testify this week. Hallelujah. Testify this week. So, I will testify. I will testify. Come on, believe it. Sing it and believe it. Will I hear you testify? I believe it. I will testify just when I thought it was over. Oh, he turned it for me. Come on, turn it, turn it, turn it. Just when I thought it was over. Oh, brand new testimony. Come on, I will testify. I will testify. I needed to sing it and believe it. That's right. I will. I will testify. I will testify just when I thought it was over. Oh, he turned it for me. Just when I thought it was over. Oh, brand new testimony. I'm testifying right now. I'm here. Hey, I will. You need to move. Testify. Come on. I will testify. The angels don't do this, you know. We have the right to. We'll celebrate. Testify. I will testify. Just when I thought it was over. Oh, he turned it for me. Just when, just when I thought it was over. Oh, brand new testimony. Amen. So I'm looking for the testimonies. Amen. I will testify. Amen. about God's capacity to turn things around. Have a seat just for a minute. You know, I am here happy for the opportunity to talk to you this morning about giving. Right? We have been in a wonderful atmosphere of worship. First lady just said, I will testify because guess what? God gives us testimony. When I just started coming to church here, I had some misconceptions about money and about giving. And I figured that I had to manage my money. And if there was not enough, there was not enough to give. But the Lord has taught me in my time here 
that when you have nothing, that is when you should give more. That is when you should make the sacrifice and give more. Because guess what? What you're giving is your seed. And the seed contains the tree. And if you eat your seed, you eat your harvest. There is no tree to grow if you eat all your seeds. So when I started to fix my mindset, and I began to put God first in my giving, and I began to put aside my needs and my wants and trust God to make the difference. Can I tell you, brethren? I got a promotion last year, but it was promotion in name only. The money didn't follow as it should have. I negotiated, I quarreled, I was frustrated, irritated, vexed, bad, bad. Nothing changed. But then I said, Lord, guess what? Let me honor you with my giving. And I forgot about the money. And I just started to give. I gave until it hurts. Gave sometimes and I said, Lord, if I do this, there is no lunch money. I can't take the toll, but I'm going to put my offering anyhow. And guess what? Nobody seen me at church would know that. I was happy to give. And when it was time for performance appraisal this year, I didn't know what to expect because they promised to evaluate it wasn't done. And my manager called me aside and he said to me, when you see a pay, don't surprise. I did a top up for you. Yeah. Brethren, that top up equates to 1.4 million over a year. Who could it be but God Almighty? Who could it be but God? So when I say to you, don't be slack. Don't be tight in your giving. Don't be tight in your giving. Because God can make the difference because that was more than I expected. More than I could have asked for if I negotiated. But God did that for me. So it is against that background I'm going to read to us from Proverbs 11. Starting at verse 23. The desires of the righteous ends only in good. But the hope of the wicked only in wrath. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Those two verses again. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. You cannot sow into good soil and not be blessed. You cannot sow into good soil and not reap a harvest. But remember, sowing and harvesting is not an instantaneous thing. Depending on the type of crop, some crops take a little time to come to fruition. So don't be disturbed if you give today and you don't see it tomorrow. Just keep giving with faith in your God. And God will, surely, surely, because God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a beggar that he should take from you. He will surely recompense you in due season. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So I'll invite our ushers to come forward now. And even if you don't have that which to give, just put your mind in the place. Put your mind in the place because it will come. And those who have a little extra, you can slip something to your neighbor who mightn't have any. Because just like God blessed Job for offering sacrifice for his friend, he will also bless you through your helping others. Bless the Lord. Musicians, can you go back to I Will Testify? We can, if you need a tithe offering, just raise your hand. We also have our card machine and our online options for giving. So if you don't have it in hand now, you can just touch base with the usher and they'll tell you how to get that done. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you this morning. 
with our giving. Lord, we lift you up. We magnify you. We glorify you and we thank you, mighty God, for giving us fertile soil in which to give. Lord, we thank you for this offering this morning. We thank you for every hand that gave, mighty God. Every heart that had an intention to give but couldn't. Multiply, mighty God, to them according to the good wishes of your heart. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. For in this house, we believe that every dollar given is an impact to one soul. So, Lord, we thank you for the souls that will be impacted through our giving this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for blessing it and multiplying it, God. Lord, that it might accomplish that which you have assigned it to accomplish. Lord, may it grow, mighty God, in the hands of our pastor and first lady. Lord Jesus, may it stretch to cover everything that is dear to be covered, mighty God. Lord Jesus, I pray for additional resources for the house, mighty God. May it come to us swiftly, God, from the east, the west, the north, the south. May all those that are anointed to give into this house, mighty God, arise and give, mighty God, the best, mighty God, that they can give. I thank you, Lord, now for blessing this offering, for multiplying it unto the hands of the givers. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Somebody clap your hands and give the Lord some praise for giving. Come on, like you're excited, like you're excited for giving. Like you know that God, that God, that God honors or giving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Just look to the person sitting beside you. Tell them, neighbor, I'm glad to see you. And you're looking so very good. You're looking so very good. Tell two more persons, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you and you're looking so very good. Beloved, I, I was just praying and the Lord just told me that through your giving, somebody today, your destiny helper is about to find you. Your destiny helper is about to find you. If you believe that you better just receive it, just receive it. For some of you this week, you're about to get some phone calls that you were waiting on. Yes, and it seems like maybe God had forgotten you, but no, 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 no. This week, this week, calls will be received. Text messages will, re will be received with the breakthrough. Emails will be received with the breakthrough. Somebody say yes. Yes. Your destiny helpers are going to find you. My God Almighty. Hallelujah. Yes. We thank the Lord for today. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for taking us thus far. We're going to run ahead. We have two wonderful guests here. We have Minister Taylor from Wafif, and we also have Minister Hemmings also. Let's put our hands together and thank the Lord for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite Minister Emmons. She's here. We, we are, we're in the series of Operation Growth. And let me see the hands of those persons who got the book, Grow Up and Win. Put your hand high, 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 high. Yes, yes, yes. From musicians to many members, ushers, everybody has that book. And we are, we are doing a deep dive in it. She is the author, as you would know. And she's just going to come on just to bless us very quickly and just to give us an idea, that book review, very quickly. Put your hands together for her while she comes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Great morning. I just give honor to the Most High God this morning because he is, he is the God above all gods. Yes. The only true and living God, the only one who never disappoints. We know that if the enemy had his way, none of us would be here but God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we honor the most high this morning. I want to also give honor to the shepherd of this house, Pastor Lewis. Bless you, man of God. And his rib, First Lady Lewis. I give honor to all the ministers. I see Minister Cuff here. Minister Swaby, I don't know if she's here. Minister Taylor is also here. Bless you, man of God. To all the leaders, to all the members, to all the partners, to all the friends, whoever is tuning in online, a blessed morning to each and every one of you. Hallelujah. We are in the season of Operation Growth. Eh? How fitting. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. This morning, I just want to briefly introduce a book that the Lord laid upon my heart a few years ago. It's called Grow Up in God. Can I tell you that when this book was written, I was determined not to write it without the assistance of the Holy Spirit. And I remember I was told by my coach, she said, before you put pen to paper concerning this book, I'm going to encourage you to get three intercessors because I guarantee you the moment you start writing this book, the enemy is going to come at you. I'm glad I took her advice because the very first night I put pen to paper, I had a dream that rocked me to my very core. I was sitting down in the dream and out of nowhere came a big yellow python with a massive head. That thing wrapped itself around me in the dream and it pulled me out of the chair and slammed me into the wall. And it began to communicate with me telepathically. That's how I knew it was a spirit. You see, life is spiritual. And I remember exactly what it said. It said, if you ever, it was a threat. People of God, when I fell out of that bed, I fell on my knees before the Lord. The bed was soaked with sweat. And I remember my heart was just beating. And for a moment, I was filled with fear. But the Lord said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but one of love, power, and a sound mind. People of God, it took me three years to write this book because every time I took pen to paper, the enemy would attack my health. He would attack my finances. He would attack my relationships. It was just arrows coming at me every time I wrote this book. And can I tell you, when I actually completed the book, what I could not do in three years, I completed in three days with a terrible headache. It felt like a steel plate was sitting on my head when this book was completed. But the Lord said, if you come against that which is coming against you by doing what the enemy thinks you shouldn't be able to do right now, it will be done and it will impact lives. So this book was completed three nights of a severe headache. But God, we give him all the glory. Hallelujah. So just quickly, what is this book about and why it will help you? It's called Fittingly Grow Up in God. There are no adults in the kingdom of God You're here. We are called to be children. And children, they grow up. They don't stay at the same place, yes? So when we come to Christ, that is the goal. We are expected to grow up, to mature spiritually. But guess what? It's intentional. You cannot sit and it just happens. And so this is how this book is designed to help you. It takes two major steps that you have to take if you want to experience results quickly. Acceleration in Christ. And so it talks about five things that you have to dispose of when you just come to Christ. The book is not only for new Christians, even though it says new Christians. It's for the backslider that's returning to Christ and you need to know God, we're from here. It is also for the person who has been in Christ for a while, but you feel stunted and you want to get that oomph to go. And so it talks about two major steps. It talks about first you have to throw out the trash and it gives you five P's. That's five areas in your life that you must throw the trash out of before you can begin to experience acceleration. When you empty the trash... There is a next step. There's nothing there. It's empty. You're detoxing. Just like you have to detox your body. Physically, you have to detox spiritually. Yeah. If you don't, piss. Just like you have to empty your garbage every day, you have to empty your spiritual garbage. Because if you don't empty your physical garbage, what happens? Piss. That's why demons are pesting some of us. We're not emptying. We're not detoxing spiritually, yeah? And so, the next thing we have to do is to feed from the living tree. And it shows you how. Why get the book? It's highly practical. It's not theoretical, <laughs> per se. It's practical. So, it tells you step by step, this is what you do to receive the results. 
that you require. Is there anybody here who do not, who does, any person here, one person who does not have the book today? Yes? All right, man of God, since I saw your hand shoot up first, I'm going to hand you this one. But I'm going to ask you a favor. I'm going to ask you, at some point in the future, bless somebody else with one. All right. Amen. So that's it, people of God. Thank you so much for having me. Rest assured, once you read the book and follow what it says, because believe me when I tell you, it's not of me. I was just the vessel. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. So you can expect the results once you apply the principles contained within. All right. Bless you. Bless the Lord. God bless you, Minister Hemmings. Let's clap our hands and thank the Lord for the servant of God. God knew there would be a Kingdom Grace International Ministries that would be needing the contents of that book. And the devil knew also. My God Almighty. And so we thank the Lord for it. We are enjoying it. I'm telling you, I've read it twice already. <laughs> it's very powerful. And the people of God are growing and we are growing and moving forward in God. Amen. Amen. I also have a very good brother of mine. He is Minister Michael Taylor. I'm telling you, beloved, one of the reasons why we take the time to honor him as a man of God and as a body, uh, you know, we, we, we thank God because when there was nobody and when Kingdom Grace just started, there was Minister Taylor. And the Lord used him. He is one of our destiny helpers. Because the Lord used him to connect us to Apostle, my spiritual father now. And there is now grace and more grace that is released. And I thank the Lord for Minister Taylor. He's going to come to us and he's going to be, of course, telling us about an event that he's going to be having, which I am going to be supporting. And he's going to come and minister. In so Did you know that the man of God is also a spiritual warrior? He's a ninja that DJs for Jesus. Did you know that? Did you know that? All right. Now, now I, I'm going to ask you to put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. And make we welcome the man glory, of God, man. Minister Taylor and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us give God praise, everybody. To God be our glory. To our God. kingdom grace. We are here. Amen. To God be all glory. Amen. You can play, man. If you have a play, let me hear. So we come to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn it up some more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Plenty, 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 plenty. Wealthy, 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 wealthy. And blessings are flow. Me can't talk to the church. You make a lot of money. Don't spend it all back. 20% where you earn your fish stash. Kick out the tent. Don't worry about that. Cause the windows are heaven with pour it all back. As people are God, you be have enough cash. It no look right if you can't pay tax. Make we pray hard. Break the spirit of luck. Cause we have to catch the fish left with the money in a dot. That's why and they can start. Stand up, look a bit when we celebrate Jesus in a radical way, you know, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plenty, 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 plenty. Wealthy, 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 wealthy. And blessings are flow. You make a lot of money, don't spend it all back. 20% where you earn your fish stash. Kick out the tent, don't worry about that. Cause the windows are ever with pour it all back. As people are God, you have enough cash. It no look right if you Make me pray hard, pray the spirit of luck. Come here, we catch the fish there with the money in and that's why and they can't stop this now. Should have really known they couldn't stop you now. Oh, blessings are flow, oh, blessings are grow, oh, oh gosh, plenty, plenty, and they can't stop this now, kill the rhythm, this now, oh, blessings are flow, blessings are, listen, listen, 
don't know about you, but me want a plenty. Billionaire, trillionaire of the century. Not when me old, not when me a 70, me want it now. Right now, definitely wealthy. Like Solomon, wealthy, wealthy. Like Abraham, wealthy, wealthy. Like Job did wealthy. Give me income and tell that they love me. That's why they can't stop this now. Should have really known they couldn't stop this now. Oh, blessings are flow, oh, blessings are grow up. Oh, oh gosh, plenty, plenty. And they can't stop this now. Should have really known they couldn't stop this now. Oh, blessings are flow. Everybody sing with me, no man. Watch this. Plenty, 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 plenty. Oh, blessings are flow, blessings are flow, blessings are plenty, 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 plenty. Wealthy, wealthy. Take it out a little bit. You know when we write this song, hold the track, keep the banner alive. Keep the banner alive, keep it. Yeah, hold the track. You know when we write this song? When we start writing this song, we did in a 2020. So me used to say 20 plenty, 20 plenty. 2020, 20, because there was a deep depression. Everybody lock up in the house. But me say, no, me not dead. Me can't dead. Plenty, 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 plenty. Wealthy, 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 wealthy. Blessings are flow, blessings are flow, blessings are flow. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Plenty, 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 plenty. Plenty, 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 plenty. We will have seen some. Take it on one truck. So, full time now, we start with the right thing. Are you ready? Hear this. Full time now, you start borrowing money. Full time now, you start lend money. Full time now, you start saving money. And slave money, we get double money. Full time now, you invest money. Full time now, you start. Full time now, full time now, full time now. Watch this now. Plenty, 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 plenty. Mix. Plenty, 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 plenty. Oh, blessings are flow, blessings are flow, blessings are flow. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Plenty, 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 plenty. Plenty, 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 plenty. Oh, blessings are flow. Watch this now. Me no see the money yet, but me declare it. Me no get me mansion, but me declare it. Me no get me X6 and me Q7 yet, but me stand on the word. Uh. You no see the money yet. You no get the mansion. And you no get your husband. Put a ring for your hand, my girl, and declare it. Because plenty, 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 plenty. Plenty, 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 plenty. Oh, blessings are flow, blessings are flow, blessings are flow. Oh gosh, oh gosh, plenty, 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 plenty. Wealthy, 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 wealthy. Oh, blessings are money coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. We decree a thing and watch it come forth. We decree a thing and watch it come forth. I want to say a prayer for you. Yeah. I want to say a prayer for you. I want to say a prayer for this church. I want to say a prayer for this nation. Amen. Many don't know or understand the life of a preacher. But sometimes we're up all night laboring. So that one person can know the truth. So that they can be delivered. Pray for me please. Hallelujah. Turn it up, turn it up. Yeah. Father, bless kingdom grace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Expand this ministry, don't it? More souls. Mama talk to you Listen. Me spend the whole night in the word of God For your revelation for the church of God. Sometimes the situation seems sad when me realize world gone mad. Yeah, me preach hard to me sweat out. Fee make the devil get out. Fee get in the salvation. Even if me preach and me only reach one. Then me back and me feed. Fee go take the nation. Save them all. When me make this altar call. Save them all. Before the trumpet sound and the coming in the cloud. Save them all. When me make this altar call. 
save them all before the trumpets uh, make you talk to the church the prior the preacher the prior the preacher hope this song reach you the prior the preacher the prior the preacher turn it up on your speaker the prior the preacher the prior the preacher hope this song reach you the prior the preacher the prior the preacher watch the band Trapped in sin because of situation Fall to your face because of temptation For stay in the church because of frustration But only the blood can emancipate man Remember the cross where we got nailed pan Remember the snake where deceive all man Two road for choose then you better choose one Come take the narrow road and seek redemption Save them all when we make this altar call Save them all before the trumpet sound and they coming in the cloud, save them all. When the man is altar call, save them all. Before the trumpet, make your talk to the church, the prior the preacher, the prior the preacher. Who of this song reacher, the prior the preacher, the prior the preacher. Turn it up on your, the prior the preacher, the prior the preacher. Who of this song reacher, the prior the preacher. Take it down. One trap, listen. Trapped in sin because of situation. Fall to your face because of temptation. Forsake the church because of frustration. But only the blood can emancipate man. Remember the cross where we got nailed pan. Remember the snake where deceive all man. Two road for choose, then you better choose one. Come take the narrow road and seek redemption. Save them all when we make this altar call. Save them all. When we met this altar car, save them all before the trumpet. Father, let this church be a sign and wonder in the nation of Jamaica. Rise up more men of God that will say, I will do it for Jesus. I will do it for the King. Let the kingdom builders arise. Let the warriors arise. Let, 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 let the appear broken. In Spanish now. Let, Lord God. Miracle signs and wonders manifest. Let the sick be healed. Let the deaf hear. Let the dumb speak. Let those that need deliverance come into deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a shaking in Jamaica. Let there be deliverance in the police force. Deliverance in the army. Deliverance all over Jamaica. The prayer of the preacher. The prior the preacher, who oh, this song reacher, the prior the preacher, the prior the preacher, turn it up on your speaker, the prior the preacher, the prior the preacher, who oh, this song reacher, who oh, this song reacher today, who oh, this song reacher. If you're not in alignment, get into alignment. If you don't know him, meet Jesus today, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory be to God. I want to bless two persons with an event that we have coming up. It's called Unmerited Favor. It's a gospel party, a kingdom business, me depa. Me serious about my thing. We want the little ones to come and see church as a place of happiness. We want them to come and know that their place, church is a place you can have fun in God. So we created this event called Unmerited Favor. We're going to dance like David dance. We're going to jump and sh** in a Jesus. And have fun in the Lord. So the tickets is $2,000 for the early bird, $2,500 for the general. VIP, 
5,800 drinks, food inclusive. I want to bless two persons, but I'm expecting to see you all. We're going to have fun in the Lord, amen. Who are those two persons? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Give her one for me, please. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Yeah. So pastor has the rest of the tickets. Be blessed, kingdom grace. I love you all. Amen. Somebody show God bless you. I wonder if I can do it. You think I can do it, Brother Taylor? Minister Taylor, I can do it? Whoa, whoa, hey, save them all. Hey, save them all. Save them all. Save them all. All right, all right. Hey, the voice of the preacher, the voice of the preacher, the voice of the preacher, the voice of the preacher. That me know, you know, the voice of the preacher. Hey, the voice of the preacher, the voice of the preacher. Make this song reach ya. My God Almighty, put your hands together. Hey, listen, listen, man. Don't give pastor no trouble. I said, don't give pastor no trouble because some of you were in the dance hall and the dance hall couldn't hold you. Some of you were in the dance hall and you were there from 9 o'clock in the night to 5 a.m. in the morning. Weddy, weddy Wednesday couldn't miss you. Weddy, weddy Friday couldn't miss you. And now you're coming to the house of God and you're sitting on your praise. My God, you're crazy, you're crazy, you're crazy. God has been too good. Tell your neighbor, God has been good. God has been good. And I'm not going to sit on my praise. My God Almighty. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Yes. Listen, listen, listen. If some of you were to give your testimony, I'm telling you, if some of you were to stand and give your testimony, people would know where you're coming from and they would understand now where you are and they would appreciate where you are going in God. Hey. Let me tell you, there are some testimonies, you know. If you ever give your testimony, my God Almighty Church would mash up. Did you know that? There are some testimonies that you have, beloved. That's why I'm telling you, you better give your testimony. You better give your testimony and put the devil to shame. 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 The word of God says, there is therefore now no. My God Almighty, touch yourself and say, I am free. Yes. I am free. Come on, touch yourself like you know you're free. Listen, there are some of us that I am sorry if we're disturbing with your praise because we might not be as perfect as you. But there are some of us that were deep in sin, far from God, but he stretched down his hand. And by grace, there are some of us that you push the level you push grace to its maximum you push mercy to its maximum and god who is so rich in mercy he reached down and he rescued you i don't know about you but i needed rescuing i needed saving my god almighty Listen, there are some of us that grew up in church, and you grew up in church, and you know what happened? You broke out and get wild. I, 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 you thought you're looking at one. I grew up in church, and let me tell you something. I saw some things, and I said, oh My God, why this look nice, you know? You know, so before my dead, I want to know what it is for wine power, woman. Jesus Christ Almighty. Can I preach to you? 
minister I say I sat in church and I saw my friends out dancing and I said my God I wonder what that feel like Jesus peace if you're not if you can't manage this you can't you can't you can't leave early you know man I am telling you and guess what there is nobody can brook out like somebody that has been in church all their life Minister, you know what I'm talking about? My God Almighty, there is nobody that can brook out and go on bad than those that were in, in church all their lives. My God Almighty. But then Jesus had to come and drape me up. I haul me up. I said, boy, I am calling you into purpose. So you see, when you see me here giving God praise and shouting, listen, listen, listen. I know because my sins were higher than a mountain but the Lord. My God. Minister, he means somebody trouble past, I know. Because sometimes we come in church and we behave like we are holier than thou. But if somebody should ever know your testimony, my God Almighty, you sit and you look pretty, but God knows where He's pulling you from. Woo! Somebody shout, Thank you, Jesus. Because when I was dead in sin, when I was dead in sin, you rescued me. You pulled me out. You pulled me out. And now I am standing in the presence of God with holy hands raised. If somebody, if you know you're standing in the presence of God and you can lift up holy hands and bless him, go ahead and bless him and put the devil to shame. My God Almighty. Hey! You, you stay there. You, you, you forget. Pastor of the anointing, not the business. So when I give my testimony, I don't business who want to look at me. Some of you have some testimony and you're afraid to shout it out. And you're afraid to run in church. Because, let me tell you something. You don't ever, don't ever forget where God takes you from. My God. Minister, you have a testimony, man of God? Yes. Yes. If, if, if some of you should give your testimonies, I'm telling you. That is why we have to just give God praise. Because some of us were sinners. Some of us were backbiters. Some of us were adulterers, fornicators, liars. In church, did you know that some of us were murderers? My God, you might not have put a bullet or a knife in somebody, but you used to murder people with your tongue. There are some of us, I'm telling you, if you think back to where God takes you from, your shame. Because if you ever curse somebody, you could curse them, close half of them. Sister Butler, no circle. Yeah. Like a viper. Them see you, and when them see you come in, they run. Because you know what? They know that when you open your mouth. Mm, problem. But today we are talking about decluttering. Somebody say declutter. Somebody say, I've gotten rid of it. I've gotten it out. I've pulled it out. By grace, I am decluttering. I wonder if I can preach this message in five minutes. Take your seat. We're in the season of Operation Growth. We give honor to the Spirit of God, honor to First Lady Lewis. Honor again to all our visiting ministers, just everybody that's here, or of course, our Kingdom Grace ministers and leaders and workers. God bless you. We thank the Lord for you. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah for the workers in ministry. Hallelujah. We're in Operation Growth, and we are looking at the book, Grow Up in God, and we're just using it to supplement this particular topic that we're on right now. We thank the Lord for what he's done so far, and we're diving into the five Ps. So far, we looked at the first one, which is possessions. There are some things that we had that we possess, physical items that we had to declutter. Somebody say declutter. 
Throw it out. And then we looked at the second P, which is what? Practices. There are some practices that we all have, whether you're saved or unsaved, whether you're a leader or not. There are some practices that we have that we had to get rid of. My God Almighty. And we are decluttering. Somebody say declutter. Yes. Now, today, we want to quickly look at two other P's. The third P is personality. My God. There are some personalities that we have. My God Almighty. And personality can be defined as behaviors that form an individual's character. There are some behaviors that we have, and we used last Wednesday, Galatians 5, verse 19 to 22, as the root scripture. And today it is the same, where the word of God tells us about these practices, yes, and these personalities that are formed and they come from the flesh. Somebody say the works of the flesh. Yes, 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 they are behaviors that are formed in the individual that it, I'm telling you, they, they, they form your character. Mm. And beloved, I'm telling you, you know, this is very important why we have to declutter. Because uh, earlier, Minister Hemmings said that, listen, decluttering, getting rid of the trash when you come into kingdom. But let me tell you something to add to that also. Even the believer, you are saved already. You have to do periodically decluttering. You have to make sure that even though you are saved and you are sanctified today, yes, every time you move out of a stage, because listen, when a harvest is reaped, it is success. But after every success, you have to re-evaluate and also look on what are the things that you have to declutter. So the farmer knows this. Every time he has a success full harvest and everything is gleaned then he still has to do some decluttering and some plowing yes so even though you are coming out of a stage of victory and you're moving and growing in God you have to stop look back where you're coming from look at even though there were victories even though there was a harvest what is it that I still need to pull out of that situation even though I am growing even though I'm developing in God even though I am a prayer warrior and I'm moving forward even though I am a preacher I am looking at the last season that I came out of and I am re evaluating constantly because even though there's victory you still have to declutter my god somebody say declutter yes and so very quickly we're looking at personality traits that they are born some of us are born with them but then other persons know, you know what? We learn them over time. And yes, you have positive personality traits, but you also have negative personality traits, don't it? Yes, because guess what? The positive personality traits will lead to growth. But the negative personalities, the negative behaviors that we have in our lives, that sometimes we pacify them and say, some barn or some steer. My God Almighty. And you look at it and you say, listen, no man, my father was like that. And because he was like that, I am just like this now. My father used to be a man that is angry and arrogant. So yes, you're comfortable now with that. But no, God is telling us that that is a personality trait that is stunting your growth, stunting your development. And you have to pull that out. My God Almighty. Somebody lay your hand on your head and say, I will change the way I think. I will change the way I think. Come on, tell yourself one more time. I will change the way I think. Yes. Negative personality traits, they are, fled, they are fed by the carnal nature, by the flesh. Romans 8 verse 7, it tells you, yes, that the, that the flesh, the carnal nature, it is always in enmity with God. What does that mean? It means that even though you are born again and you're trying to progress as a man of God, as a woman of God, as a daughter of God, as a son of God, the flesh that you are roped in, it is constantly warring against your spirit. It is constantly warring against the spirit of God that is within us. And so what you have to constantly do is you have to constantly refresh and declutter. You have to look at those things that are trying to be formed in you. The flesh will always try to form these negative ways of thinking and the book tells you that listen it's called stinking thinking my god almighty oh yeah 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 stinking thinking that is the topic of tonight today's word there is some thinking that you have i'm telling you it don't it don't match up to god 
These personality traits that cause you to think, it is not an aroma to God. It is stinking, thinking. And what is some of these thinking, thinking? It is the thoughts that are formed in you that makes you to be pessimistic. Nothing can please you. You are just always negative, always angry. Did you know that there are some personality traits that will cause you to always be boisterous? My God Almighty, even when life is going good, you can't seem to have peace in your life. Why? Because there's a personality trait that is on you. There's a way of thinking that has imprinted itself on your heart and your mind that you are just shut down and stunted. But today, through the power of the Holy Ghost, we are here to declutter and remove every thought that will be leading you down. To that pit of hell. Thoughts of stinking thinking. Touch yourself and say, I will not go forward with stinking thinking. Yes. Philippians 2 tells us, listen. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do I get rid of the stinking thinking? It is making sure that we read the word of God. What does the word of God say pertaining to my life? You read the word, you apply the word, and you make sure that it is something that you do constantly. You practice reading the word, not just once a week, but in order to break a habit, you have to be consistent and disciplined in doing it. That is why we tell you that you cannot just read the word just for Monday and ignore it the rest of the week. Beloved, did you know that Sunday is just 20% of church? Did you know that? Sunday is just 20% of church. You as a child of God, if most of your development is done from Monday to Saturday. When we gather together here and you look and you can't, even, you can't pray, you can't even worship God. It tells me that guess what? You are not putting in the work Monday to, to Saturday. And you are allowing that, that personality trait that is coming from the realms of darkness. You are allowing it to wrap itself around you. And you are not doing enough to push back so that your mind can be renewed. Did you know that? Yes. And so guess what? In order to be an effective child of God. In order to grow consistently. You cannot wait on Sunday morning. What would happen? COVID taught us there was no Sunday morning worship for about a year and a half. And a lot of churches went empty. Why? Because Monday to Saturday was neglected. People thought church was about Sunday morning only. But the man and the woman of God that is growing, I'm telling you this. Yes, you come to church on Sunday, but if a COVID should happen 2.0, you are not going to regress. But a matter of fact, you are going to grow out of it. When you come out of it, you're going to look brand new. Yes, because you're getting rid of the stinking thinking. My God. Listen, this is something that I had to do. Years ago, I had to look at myself and self-evaluate. I realized that there was some thinking, some that personality trait that I was holding on to. Because people would say, you know, says not you. It's so your father did stay. And you know what I would do? I would take that as a crutch. And I would say, you know what? This is just a part of me, naturally. And when I come to this knowledge of Christ that, listen, man, there is thinking, 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 and there are things that attach itself to my personality that is really not of God. It wasn't in the plan of God for me. Immediately, I had to start to address the stinking thinking that was in my own head. And you know what happened? It was very hard. Because in order to wrap yourself around that inner beloved and to change from that personality, I'm t so I, I can look at you. There are some of you I'm ministering to and I look at you and I know the, the, the person who is looking at me is really not the real you. It is a personality that the enemy has forged you into. He has bent and forced you into and over time you have been comfortable with it and you think that this is the real you. That is why you can be what? You can be comfortable even in failure. But I'm telling you, that's not the real you. Yes. You have to then, I had to put myself, I had to be very disciplined. And guess what? It's hard. But I had to do it. And I had to submit myself to reading the word and to be constant in season, out of season. Even when it was not exciting and it felt like it was boring. Man of God, I had to kneel down and I had to pray sometime and I had to read on my knees. 
Because if I sat and read, I would fall asleep. If I sat and I prayed, if I lie down to pray, I would fall asleep. I had to then break myself into a new culture of existence, walking and praying. That is why now I pray in church. I, can't ask, I, I find it very hard to kneel down. Because I remodeled myself. I'm telling you, beloved, some of you pray and you sit down and you pray five minutes and fall asleep. Yeah. You go in your bed and you have good intention. And you say, listen, you tell all your husband, tonight we are going to storm the gates of hell. And you lie down in the bed together and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus. And by five minutes, you don't have a prayer, solid prayer. And you say, no, I'm going to take it up tomorrow. And you start snoring. You have to forge and break yourself out of it. I'm telling you, it's something that is hard, but it takes action. It requires a whole heap of effort. Musicians, sometimes you don't like practicing, don't it? Because it's laborious. Sometimes your finger them hurt, or you play until your hand get, you get all blisters. But what? You love it and you want to grow, so you have to do it. Yes. Beloved, we're going to grow, you know. And, and I'm telling you, some of you are going to scream and kick, but we're going to pull you. We're going to pull you. Because I know that you have the capacity for it. But you have to get rid of the stinking thinking, just like I had to do. Yes, there were some limitations on my life. Stinking thinking, like even dishonor. I had to break myself out of that. Can I talk to you? I was brought up in a culture, man of God, I, I, I don't even want to call the denomination, but I was brought up, but it, it fostered dishonor. Because everybody was their own big man. And nobody liked to submit themselves to nobody. That was one of the greatest dishonors I've ever seen. And I never see it as nothing until I received the word of God. And I started to realize that I was... Uh, that, that, that stinking thinking was being forged in my memory. And it took a while to get it out of me. But just like Paul and him say, I'm going beat him body. You think he mean take off a belt? No. He meant that he had to mortify the flesh. That he had to go against the body, the carnal nature. To change that way of thinking. And that's why we push so hard and we tell you that this house have to have a, whole, a, a culture of honor, of loyalty, of excellence. Because you, are, you have it in you. But the personality that the enemy has tried to forge on you is keeping you. It's separating you from becoming who God called you to be. My God. Let me jump from this. So the third one that we're going to, de we're going to declutter is personalities. I am getting rid of, get rid of every personality that is not of God. Some of you, you're saying that you are, I am an introvert. No. That is a personality that the enemy placed on you. You are somebody who's supposed to run wild and free in God. You're supposed to be tearing down some strongholds. But because you look and you say, I am introverted. You know, everybody in my family is like that. No, it's what the enemy has wrapped you in. But God has called you to be something else. Yes. And then guess what? There are others that they run wild. But God has called you to be an intercessor. Where you're not supposed to be running up and down with everybody. In his plan and his vision and purpose for your life. He has called you to always find that quiet time. Just like Jesus. To separate yourself. But because you have been forged, whether it be through school or even on the job, your personality has been forged by the people who were around you. And you think that is just me, but the very friends that you have have helped to forge a personality in you that is not you. And you love company and friend and combolos. But the real you, God has called you to be an intercessor who will shut down everything and you're okay by being by yourself. Some of you, if you be by yourself for one day, you're, 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 you're paranoid. You have to text a friend or call a friend. My God Almighty, I'm going to take my time. But guess what? That is not what God has called you to do. God in you is wrapped up. The real personality, the real mind that God has given you, you need to expose yourself to it. You need to push through and break the shackles of the old, that carnal flesh, that carnal personality, and, and discover the real you. 
When you, let me tell you something. When a seed is planted in the ground, if you look at the seed, a mango seed, it don't look like a mango. You cannot look at a mango seed and say, oh, that's a mango. You cannot look at a cherry seed or a grape seed and say, oh, that's a cherry. No, it takes time for it to grow and develop. And it's when it blossoms and bears the fruit. That is when you see the realness, the trueness of what the fruit really is. Some of you, before you can see who you really are, you have to break these limitations of personality and grow up in God. And then you will begin to see the real you. The real you will surprise you. The real me surprised me. Because you could not ever, they asked me, I remember, one day we were in a meeting, and as a minister, they said, listen, Minister Lewis, you want to be a pastor? I said, no. I, and they said, why? I said, I don't like to hear people business. That is not me. I can't talk, I don't like talking to people. See, see, see first lady can tell you. Years ago, you come to me with a problem, I would say, all right. And, I'd be, and you're talking, and I'm saying, okay, yeah, man, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, and I'm not listening to you. Why? Because I don't have time to hear you. But that was a personality that was wrapped around me that was not me. And when I broke that limitation, I realized that, my God, the real me loves people. The real me is conversational. The real me wants to hear the problem, not become fast, but because there's something in me that can help them. And the more I began to grow, I realized that in seed form, I was limited. But in order for me to see the abundance and every facet of my being that God has called me to be, I had to mature to growth. And I had to mature and bear fruit. That's why you cannot grow and stop as a plant. You cannot grow and then stop as a tree. You have to make sure that you grow your tree, but you have to blossom and you have to bear fruit. Some of you have grown to a point and stop. And not until you begin to bear fruit. Listen, how therein is God glorified? That ye bear much fruit. Not just by being a tree. Because the fig tree was a tree. It wasn't a plant. The fig tree got cursed. Not because it did not grow. But because it did not bear fruit. It did not finalize its purpose. Some of you, you're stuck at 90%. But God is saying you need to make sure that you stretch yourself and fulfill 100% so that you can bear fruit. Because it is in the bearing of your fruit, you are going to really recognize the blessing of God on your life. And then in the bearing of your fruit, other persons are also going to be impacted through you. By God. Somebody say, I will bear fruit. So I must stop the stinking thinking. Yes. Let's look at the other. People. The fourth P. People. You have to declutter people. There are some persons in your life that are dangerous, beloved. They are dangerous for your development. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Write that down. It says, bad company corrupts good character. Yes. Bad company. There are some of you, I'm not saying declutter every person in your life. No, because God has not called us to dwell in isolation all the days of your life. No, but there are some people in your life that you have to declutter them. You have to get rid of them because they are stopping you from growth. A matter of fact, the minute they came in your life, they caused you to stop growing. Think, beloved, there are some people that came in your life. The moment they came into your life, you stop growing. Jesus. Dear Art, let me tell you something. While I was praying, the Lord told me that if you have destiny helpers, you will have destiny distractors. If, the, if God will bless us with destiny helpers, then the enemy will counteract that with destiny distractors and you have to be able to identify the destiny distractors and declutter them let me tell you this there are two major ways the enemy distract you with destiny distractors he will put them in your life from day one but he will place them it is he'll put them there but they will have a detonation date You'll know them for six years and you're good with them. But on that seventh year, that eighth year, that ninth year, the date of their detonation, 
Then they blow up. You and them blow up. And you know what happened? It derupts and it derails you from your purpose. Significantly throw you off course. Yes. Yes. There are people that God has placed in your life. And God has sent them there to help to propel you forward. But the enemy also sends destiny disruptors. And they will be good with you for five months. But on the sixth month, they detonate. And when they detonate in your life, it throws you off course. My God Almighty. Yes. And then, there are some people that you will just come into contact with. Just like a destiny helper, you'll just meet them. I meet Minister Taylor, you know, destiny helper will just connect. Boom! And the glory, grace of God, grace to start release. There are some destiny distractors. You allow them to come into your life and immediately they come in your life. Trouble just start. And we ignore it. And the more you ignore it is the more trouble that is wreaking in your life. But you don't want to declutter it. But you see, today, today somebody is leaving here with the understanding that I must declutter some people. And it's not saying that you don't love people, but you love them enough to disconnect them. Because let me tell you this, there are some people that are attaching themselves to you. You are bad for them. Because not everybody can help everybody. Did you know that? Yes. Yes. There are some people that you have attached yourself to. You say you want to go in covenant with them. But man of God, God has not required it. God has not has willed it that you go in covenant with them. That is why we have to be very discerning. Because it's not everybody alike is a covenant man or woman with you. It's okay to have friends. It's okay to have family. But the priority is covenant keepers. You have to declutter, not just personalities, but you have to declutter some people. I have to close now. Hallelujah. And this is important because I read something in the book that really spoke to me. And it says, it gave an example, minister. It was that you'll be standing in the light in a corner. And the entire room is dark. Somebody in the dark calling a name. Chris, come here, Chris. And the more they call you, the more perceptive and more open you are to see who, what is that happening. And you start to gradually you start to step away from the light. And you want to know the person is in the dark. You can't see them, but you're hearing them. And so they are influencing and pulling you. And subtly, before you know it, you have left the light and you're in the darkness trying to find out what is happening. And that is how the enemy pulls away some of you by using people. So they don't come to you gradually and grab your hand and say, let us go and fornicate tonight. No. They come to you and they will gradually talk to you and become friends. And over time, the flesh will just beckon and call you. And gradually you're stepping away, stepping away, stepping away, stepping away. Until you find yourself surrounded by darkness and you're saying, when did I get here? Yes. Beloved, you have to evaluate. That is why, you know, we love that word, intentional. You have to be intentional. You have to be, you have to be very discerning. Look on the life that you have. What is the personalities that I have that are really not of me? I have taken on these personality traits, but really, it's not in the plan of God for my life. And when you know your purpose, it's easy to sift that out. Because if you know that God has called you to be a prayer warrior, you cannot be somebody who just, you just, every pan knock you have to be there. If God calls you, I am an intercessor. Yes. You can't be somebody that every little thing you elaborate and talk off your mouth. Because intercessors are some of the most private people. They are some of the most confidential people. So if you find an intercessor that love talk, my God Almighty, in trouble. So when you know your purpose, it helps to sift the personality that you have. Because I know God has called me to be a man of God to lead. Then there are some personality traits. If I know God has called me to be a man of God, a pastor. Then if I don't like talking something wrong, I realize that part of my personality is not of God. That is thinking, thinking. I have to sift it out. 
So you see how your purpose is, your, pers- your purpose helps you to be discerning even over your very personalities. Are you learning? Yes. And your purpose also helps you to sift out the people that are around you. Because if you are, uh, if God has placed the prophetic in you and you're a prophet, then you need to be in the company of prophets. If you're an intercessor, if you're an evangelist, if you're an evangelist, God called it to be an evangelist, but you don't like talking to people, you don't like meeting new people. Then you know that that part of that personality has to go. So you force yourself, you bend yourself, you break it out of you. You help people to hold you accountable. You go on the bus. My, listen, the first time I preached a word, I was nervous and I preached it to just one person. Because I knew that I was a preacher, but I found it hard to talk to people. And so I bend it out of me. I made sure. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to make sure I talk to somebody at the bus stop. And the more I force it and bend it and talk to the people, I, pre- I realize that, wow, the real me is coming out. This is who I really am. My God. Everybody's standing. Everybody's standing. Beloved, uh, this moment of growth, this series of growth, is very, 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 very impactful. Not just for leaders, but it's impactful for each and every one of you, especially new converts. The material that you're being taught the information that has been released to you, the revelation that God, the, b- the fresh bread that God is breaking over your life is to ensure that you grow. Somebody say, I will grow. Yeah, I will grow. Yes. God bless you, man of God. Bless you, bless you. I will grow. You have to grow. And you have to be intentional, intentional about growth. I have to grow. No matter how hard... Though the task be great, Lord, I will work for you. And we say, Jesus, use me. And oh, Lord, don't refuse me. But are you willing to grow into what God has you to do? Yes. There are some of us that God can't use us because you're in a place. You're being dominated by a personality that God can't flow in. In order for God to use you, you have to break out of that mold. Yes. Man of God, I want to give you a word. God wants to use you powerfully, but for the last 15 years, you've been stuck into a cage, a personality that is not you. And if you count back to 15 years ago, something happened in your life, 15 years, that has caged you into that personality. And you thought that this is me. And it's affecting your, your, right now, it's affecting your current relationships. But today, the bread of life has broken that curse over your life. Today, today, man of God standing behind him, lift your hands. Yes, yes. There is a cage that you are also locked in. And the, the, I'm telling you, the Spirit of God just showed me that cage just burst open. Personalities that are not of God. Yes, 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 yes. Let this mind be in you which was also woman of God let me prophesy to you from this day onward that cage that personality it's not you woman of God there's a personality that has been formed in you because of the persons who you were cultured around ah yeah yeah And today, the word of God is pulling you out. There are some people that just like them, I saw that cage break. I saw the hand of God pull you out. Super. Somebody lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Personalities that are not of God. 
I speak to you now. I bind you and I pull you out by the power and grace of Almighty God. Be thou loose now in your minds. Break, 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 break. Every personality that is not of God, be thou broken. Somebody shout now. Now be broken. Be broken. Yes, yes. My God, my God. Yes. Hey. Woof. Broken. Open up your mouth and shout broken. Yes, yes, yes. The real you. The real you. Ah! My God. Yes, 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 yes. And for those who need decluttering, people around you, friends around you, negative people around you, right now I sever every tie, I sever every attachment, I sever every man and woman that is around you that ought not to be in your life, we sever in the name of Jesus. Yes. Both of you guys, there are some friends that you have that God, today, I'm telling you, God is going to separate them. There are people that God will remove the cage. There are people that God will snatch them out of the cage. But then there are others that God will actually put you in a box to preserve you. And that's what God is doing to you too, young man. He's going to preserve you and cut out every negative distraction. There are young friends that you have. The devil has planted them in your lives to derail you, to influence you. But I declare today, you will become the influencers. Lift up your hands. I declare over your lives that today, you will become the influencers. We seal you with the blood of Jesus. From your head to your very toe. There shall no harm come to your minds. There shall no harm come to your personalities. There will be no distractions by people. No, no, no. No distractions by friends. But God is sealing you. Yes. I seal them now in Jesus' name. Somebody clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. I declare that just as how God preserved these two, these two young men, God will preserve you and cause those people around you that are not for you to be exposed in the name of Jesus. Let the light of God shine upon your life. Every dark person, every dark plan, every dark place, every dark way, be thou exposed today. Yes. And when the Lord exposes them, it's not for you to argue with them. It's not for you to, to, to be in any, any, any confrontation, no. It is for you to receive the knowledge and just to step away. Because God himself is going to expose them. Every snake that slithers itself into your life is exposed. Every friendship that will snake its way into your life, it's not of God. We expose them. By the power of Almighty God. 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for the word today. Is there somebody here that would like to give their life to the Lord? I'm going to ask you to come. If you want to give your life to the Lord, I'm going to ask you to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's anybody else that's here that you want us to just speak a word over you, I'm going to be praying. But if you want to just come, I'm going to ask you to come. This word has moved you and you just want to come. I'm going to, the altar is open. Just come. I'm going to pray. If you want to come, just come. The altar is open. Father, I thank you for this word today. I thank you because your grace is in this house. Your grace is evident in kingdom grace. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, O oh God, because we know that there are personalities that are being shattered. Those personalities that were not of you. We know, O oh God, that there are people that are being pulled out of our lives. People that were not of you. Father, the destiny distractors are being cut off. My God, even as these people stand here before you, Father, I speak over their lives. I speak into their lives and I prophesy over them that today is a day of newness. It's a day of new beginnings. Yes, yes, yes. It is a day of the new. I declare, Father God, that they will leave here walking in newness. They will not be tied to anything that is not of you. Every soul tie is now cut off. They are delivered. Shut up, Alia. I lay hands on them and I speak over their lives. And we say, break now. Everything that is not of you, Father, let it break now in the name of Jesus. Break now in the name of Jesus. My God, every distraction over her life, let them be removed. Let them be removed right now, Father. Yes, God is going to speak to you this week. Look at me, Sister Brown. God is going to speak to you this week. Yes. Come to fasting service on Tuesday. God is going to speak to you. He's going to pull you aside. In order to hear him, you also have to pull yourself aside from every distraction. He wants to speak to you definitively. It means that it's not going to be through anybody. God is saying that he wants time with you alone. 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 He's going to speak with you. Yes. Somebody just point your hands towards these people and just say, blessed. Every one of you standing at this altar, you're blessed. We bless you in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. Whatever was wrong is now made right. Because the hand of God is here and it is on you right now. Somebody clap your hands and thank the Lord for them. Yes. Yes. There are a few persons we want to remember them in prayer. Minister Swaby, her son, was ill. He was in the hospital last night, but thanks be to God, he is out. Somebody clap your hands and thank the Lord. That's her baby boy. He's recovering at home, and she stayed in just to take care. We want to remember them. We want to also remember other persons that are not well. A few other persons had the flu. Persons sent text messages, calls. But we want to thank the Lord. We know that their health shall spring forward speedily. Somebody say speedily. Speedily. Continue to grow, beloved. Make sure you're here for fasting service. Make sure you're online for Bible study on Wednesday night. And we're in the process of one soul more. Yes. And where we want to build disciples, we want to ensure that we bring in, grow them up, and send them out. Hallelujah. God bless you. Lift your hands for the benediction. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Greet somebody before you go. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you love them. Yes, man. Tell them that you love them. Person.